Hungry Box is one of Professional Melee's most divisive players, with some fans going as far as saying that he is single-handedly killing the Professional Melee scene. But even the biggest critics of Hungry Box have to respect the level of consistency he brings to the table, and how he is one of the few players who is able to play Jigglypuff at such a high level. So I thought I'd take a deeper look into Hungry Box's stats for 2017 so far, and see what interesting conclusions I could draw from it. The data used for this video is sourced from every VOD I could find of Hungrybox playing a top 100 player this year. This totaled to 358 individual games that I took data from the VOD and put into Excel and Tableau to analyze. So first off, let's look at what Hungrybox's win rate on each stage looks like this year. Coming in first is Final Destination with a 77% win rate. Next, surprisingly enough, is Pokemon Stadium with a 74% win rate. Third and fourth place are super close, but Battlefield beats out Dreamland by a tenth of percent at 72.8 and 72.7% respectively. And finishing off the list, we have Yoshi's Story at a 69% win rate and Fountain of Dreams at a 60% win rate. So your first thought looking at this data might be, so why doesn't Hungrybox counterpick people to FD or Stadium instead of Dreamland? And I would respond to this, the level of players who get to play Hungrybox on Dreamland is much higher than the level of players who play against him in FD or Stadium. Look at it like this, when Hungrybox 3-0 is a player, they are most likely not going to counterpick him to Dreamland, so he's not going to get the play on that stage. And in turn this will fluff his win rates on stages that he gets counterpicked to, like Stadium. But when Hungrybox faces a player who's able to take a game off him, he's most likely going to take this higher caliber player to Dreamland. You can see this from the count of what game in a set that Stadium takes place on versus what game in a set Dreamland takes place on. Stadium matches almost exclusively take place on games 2 and 3 because after winning game 1, Hbox is very likely to be counterpicked to stages like FD and Pokemon Stadium, and if the players lose game 2, they're more likely to pick Stadium again or switch over to FD, which is why these win rates are inflated. Whereas the Dreamland game count is more evenly spread between games 2, 3, and 4, which is affected by when Hungrybox loses his first game in a set. Next, let's look on how close Hungrybox games are on average. For this analyzation, the closeness of a game is going to be determined by how many stocks on average Hungrybox has left at the end of the game. By stage, the difference between stocks remaining is pretty much negligible besides Fountain of Dreams, which has much closer games on it, most likely due to the fact that Hungrybox has only played 18 games on the stage this year, and many of the games on Fountain come later in the set. There's a little bit more variance when you look at it by character, with Hungrybox generally ending games against Marth with about two stocks left, whereas against Sheiks, Foxes, and Ices, he generally ends the game closer to one stock. And then when we go even further and look at the closeness of the game by player, it's no surprise that Hungrybox has his closest games against Mango and Armada, with the closeness of Esfat and Leffen being not too far behind. Interestingly, Plop and Mewtwo King have the exact same level of closeness against Hungrybox this year, even though Mewtwo King is 5 and 6 against him, and Plop is 2 and 9. It's also important to look at the highs and the lows when observing data, which in this case would be 4 stocks. Hungrybox has had an impressive 6 4 stocks against top 100 players this year, with his most notable ones being against Mewtwo King at Frame Perfect 2 and S2J at the Spring Smash. Summit. Hungrybox himself has also never been 4 stocks so far this year, and has only been 3 stocks a total of 9 times so far, with Mewtwo King and Plop doing it 3 and 2 times respectively, and Duck being the only one to do it on a character other than Fox. Lastly, we are briefly going to look at the game lengths for Hungrybox. Hungrybox often gets criticized for the longer games that his slow, patient, and sometimes campy playstyle can bring about, but his average game length this year is only 3.5 minutes. Interestingly enough, Hungrybox's average game length for a loss is longer on every single stage except Fountain of Dreams, where his average win is 40 seconds longer than his average loss. This number is greatly skewed by the Puff Ditto he played against Prince of Boo at Saint Gaming Live, where all three matches took place on Fountain. When we remove these three games, there is now only a negligible 6 second difference. While on the topic of outlier games that can skew the data, let's talk about Hungrybox's shortest and longest games this year. Hungrybox's shortest game this year was his second game in Winner's Finals versus Drug Fox at Bad Moon Rising 2 that lasted only 52 seconds and featured 3 rest kills. On the flip side of this, Hungrybox has been a part of three timeouts this year, two of which he won against Chudat that both happened in Game 5 of their respective sets at Genesis and Dreamhack, and one which he lost against Wizzy at Smash Rivals. So yeah, this is most of the interesting information I got from analyzing Hungrybox so far this year. So now I turn the question over to you. Who would you like to see me analyze next? Yeah, so leave a comment down below on that, over on Reddit, or you can tweet me at, at SaveIsUntitled, where I post updates on how the videos are going and like what's coming up. Like that infographic I showed earlier in the video about the win rates on different stages, I tweeted that out yesterday to give people like an update on like where I'm going and where in the creative process I'm at. 
And again, I want to thank you guys so much for coming and watching these videos and enjoying it and giving me feedback, both positive and negative, so that I can improve my videos in the future. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. See you guys next time.